So there's been a lot of lies and rumors circulating about me for a while now, so I decided let me go ahead and give the story behind my time blindness video. On the story, my mom lashed out at me. Now she's a great mom and I love her, but everybody makes mistakes. <laughs> Guys, days like today are why I love the internet. Stories and interactions that years ago we would have never had the chance to see, we now get to see every single day right at our fingertips. And boy, do we have a good one today. Now, about two weeks ago, I made a video onto that TikToker who was asking for accommodations from what we presume to be their employer for time blindness. However, as people do, this TikToker decided to share too much information on the internet. And if you read my comment on that video, then you would already know what I'm talking about. It was not an employer who got mad at her for asking for accommodations for time blindness. It was her mother. Yes, she went on the internet complaining about how society at large will not respect people who need special accommodations when in the end it was actually just her mother who was getting angry with her. Moving her original argument from the ridiculous category to the unbelievably laughable category. Now as I'm sure you might expect with a person who's willing to share this stuff on the internet, the TikToks did not end there. She decided to double down and make it even worse. And that's what we're going to be looking at today, we're going to be looking at the responses she made to her own original video. It reads like she's trying to make the situation better and improve her public image at this moment, but uh, well, it does not go that way. But let's not waste any more time talking about it, let's just watch it. Let's begin. Please subscribe. So there's been a lot of lies and rumors circulating about me for a while now, so I decided let me go ahead and give the story behind my time blindness video. I was applying for a trade school and I was with my mom and we were on a phone call. And apparently, you are out of the program if you were late four times. So I need to know, are there accommodations for ADHD time blindness? Because I needed to know that. Because if no, then that would need to be a factor in my decision whether or not to go. All right, so I guess this kind of makes sense. If you truly feel you are incapable of controlling your own time, having a question about this might make sense. However, once again, this is not a situation where a person is truly incapable of controlling their time. So expecting an accommodation is kind of insane. However, I will go on the record saying that I hate policies like this in school. I had a few professors who had rules like this when I was in college, and I just don't get it. It's a different story when someone is employing you, they're paying you but when you're paying for your own school and you're paying for these classes, I've always found it kind of insane that professors are allowed to make rules like this. Being late to three or four classes throughout a semester is not going to automatically make it where I do not have the information to pass your class, so you should just go ahead and fail me anyways. I had one professor like this where you had three times you could be late during the entire semester or you automatically fail, and I was driving to school because I lived off campus and my tire blew and my kind of car does not have a spare tire in it, so I had to pull over and find a ride. I ended up being like 10 minutes late to class and it counted against my three. So something I had absolutely no control over. Now me being a pretty confrontational individual and not wanting to allow a grumpy old tenured man to mess with my education, I went to the dean and I got it settled, I got it not counting against me. All that is to say, however, I wouldn't have done that had it been in my control. If I overslept, I would not have made a fuss about it because that's my fault. If you know you have time blindness and you choose not to do anything to help you be on time, that's on you. That would be like me leaving the house knowing I had a flat tire. I'm gonna try not to repeat myself too much, but like I said in the last video, there are no reasonable accommodations for this. There just aren't any. Now let's be real. When I post the video, I figured everybody would know I was referring to ADHD time blindness. I really was not in tune to how little neurotypicals know about neurodiversity and the ableism, let's be real. Alright, so I feel like this is kind of a silly response, it's sort of passive-aggressive, probably influenced by not liking the response that her video received. I'm not doubting that there are some people acting like this doesn't exist. Like I said, time blindness is a real thing, it's been documented, it's been studied. However, at least what I saw, most of the comments were not saying it doesn't exist or like it's not real. It was just people saying that there's no way to accommodate for it and that asking for accommodations is super unrealistic and kind of self-centered. There was a lot of good examples in her comment section, like would you want a paramedic who's responding to you to be accommodated for time blindness and just stuff like that that pointed out how impractical this kind of thing was. I hear the word ableist thrown out a lot of these days and I think a lot of the time it's not really used correctly. Saying that things like this don't exist and those with ADHD don't struggle that's one thing but to say that something's unrealistic in a professional setting that's not ableist it's just a fact. But on the story my mom lashed out at me now she's a great mom and I love her but everybody makes mistakes. And I just wanted to vent about it online because I'm tired of this neurotypical society who does not 
see your struggle. All right, so I have a certain take on this kind of mindset of the neurotypical society that doesn't see your struggle, and to a point I kind of understand the frustration, and there's a real argument there that people should be more informed about what's going on in certain people's minds, but again, asking everyone around you to accommodate for it is just not realistic, nor is it fair. Now, I can already hear the comments, oh, August, you don't get it, you'll never understand. Well, that's just not true. When I was like 10 years old, I was diagnosed with OCD. I've gotten a lot better with it now. I've done a lot of work to kind of overcome it, but of course, I still struggle with certain things. Now, a lot of people think that OCD is like wanting your house clean or trying to keep picture frames straight. That's not what it is. It's as the name implies, obsessive compulsive behavior, things that your brain makes you do, usually routines or habits that you are forced to do by your brain, essentially, over and over and over and over and over again. Oftentimes, your brain will assign some crazy consequence to not doing those things, so you feel like you have to do them even if you don't really want to. Now, I used to have a ton of different things that I had to do when I was younger that I've since kind of broken and gotten over, and one of those things was washing my hands. I genuinely used to wash my hands like 40 or 50 times a day. I'm not exaggerating, but surprise, surprise, when I was in school, I would not be asking every 10 or 15 minutes to go wash my hands. Why? Because I understood that was not reasonable. It was not realistic. There are certain things that you're going to go through in life that are going to be your problem, and even if you can't control them, it's on you to take care of it. Now, I'm really not trying to sound preachy here, I'm hoping it's not coming off that way, but on my last video about this TikToker, I got a ton of comments about how, oh my god, you would never understand, you would never understand what it's like to feel like you can't control something, and you're just wrong. You made an assumption because I don't agree with you, and you are wrong. I do know exactly what it's like, probably to more of an extent than most people commenting that do. All of this is to say that I understand the frustration that might come from somebody not really understanding what you're going through, but at the end of the day, it's not their job to understand. They've got their own stuff, their own life to worry about, and they do not need to be worrying about yours on your behalf. If you go through life expecting people to do that for you, you're going to be very disappointed. So this is something that you guys have been asking for a while now, and I just want to apologize for not answering it sooner. So honestly, when I was asking, what I was hoping for was a 15-minute window and more times you're allowed to be late. And after that video came out, people have stitched and given some really good advice about even more accommodations like having an expectation time that I didn't think of. They also gave tips on how to utilize clocks and alarms even more so than I already was. Alrighty, so immediately I'm hearing a lot of things that don't really make sense when she's talking about what she expected. First off, an extra 15 minute window. If you can kind of understand and comprehend that 15 minute window as an extension, then just give that to yourself and leave 15 minutes earlier. That seems like a really strange thing to ask for. If you can kind of comprehend and like conceptualize that 15 minutes, do it yourself. And then she says give her an expected time. Um like the one that they gave you that you can't be late with? I don't understand any of this. So did I make the video because I'm selfish and I think that everyone must spend their time to me because I don't respect anyone's time? No. I just think that schools and businesses have a higher obligation to God and I think that they their first responsibility needs to be to care for other people and if those people are struggling then they need to reach out to them and ask, okay, how can we help you? What can we do to work on this? All right. Okay, so it, it seems like we're entering some weird territory here. Um, Walmart has no obligation to me, just like I have no obligation to Walmart. If Walmart reached out to me personally, asking me what they can do for me, I would kind of be a little worried. I don't need the Walton family asking me what they can do for me unless they're writing me a check. And again, just this ideology of my way or the highway, she's saying that I think these things are how it should be, therefore that's how it should be. That's not how it works. So I just think that other people's struggles and getting them help needs to come before profit. Do I think that them and their time doesn't matter either? Absolutely not. It just matters less in comparison to your time, right? Because that's how this spiel is reading. Now look, I'm not a person who really cares about corporations. They don't care about me, I don't care about them, but I like some of their services so uh, they can stick around if they like. But this mindset that they should accommodate all your problems for you is just kind of wild. So this is a message to the haters. By hate, I'm not referring to civil disagreement and constructive criticism. I just wanted to let you know that nothing you think, say, or do can really make me love you any less. You may not view me this way, but I don't view you as just another video adding to the chaos or just another mean comment. I see you as a whole human being with infinite value. Infinite value, my god, I wish. My value is that of a YouTube commentator who talks about bad cooking and Darman. Whatever the value of that, that's what I hold, and I'm telling you it's not infinite. I may not know your story, I may not know what you've experienced in your life, but I know you have one. I know that you have hopes and dreams, and your own opinions. And you just want to be heard. Maybe you're just tired of nobody hearing or seeing you. But the girl that you're hating on on the internet does. 
because at the end of the day, we're not that different. The only reason why I kind of can be is because my savior, Jesus Christ. No. <laughs> All right, we're gonna, we're gonna cut this one short. The comment section of this video is already gonna be a war zone. Let's not add fuel to the fire. When people ask me, how does it feel being the time blindness girl and have everybody bashing you constantly on Twitter and Instagram? And all I could say is it's a testament of what the United States has become. No, oh, here we go. And we hear about algorithms, political radicalization, and how the internet is influencing humans. And we, we think, oh, okay. But then when it happens to you, you see how big of a problem it is. Because when we can no longer have a civil discussion about a video with very little context, it makes you wonder... Is there even a future for our nation? What future is there to fight for? Uh, ma'am, we used to burn women at the stake because we thought they were magical beings. Not too long ago, if you disagreed with a guy in a bar, you could go outside and shoot each other legally. The amount of wars fought over simple disagreements in ideology would take hours to tally up. If you think humans disagreeing with each other in a non-civil manner is new and because of the internet, I've got some really bad news for you. I know you thought this was really deep, but, uh, Unfortunately, no, you are incorrect. There is still a future to fight for, even though somebody made fun of you on Twitter. Because arousing mass amounts of hate, judging people, making mass assumptions, and being stuck in a cognitive loop without even knowing it, and then doing exactly what the algorithms want is seen as normal. But you know what? It doesn't have to be. Recently, I've noticed, like, a lot of blaming the internet and, I guess, like, the powers that be for your problems and this trend of what I guess could kind of be described as forfeiting personal responsibility. Like, no, it's not the TikTok algorithm's fault. The Rothschilds aren't out there pressing a button sending hate your way. People are just rightfully calling you out for saying something silly on the internet. There's no conspiracy. Well, guys, what are your thoughts on this entire situation? Is it sort of being blown out of proportion? I would say maybe, but at the same time, she keeps like doubling and tripling down, so I mean, whose fault is it really? At some point, you just gotta stop responding to every little thing or it's just gonna keep going on forever. Apologies for the ranting in this video. I did not mean to talk for as long as I did, but you guys know me. Once I start talking about something, it's kinda hard for me to put it down. Miss Chaotic Philosopher, if you happen to see this, uh, no hate towards you, obviously, but, uh, well... You are wrong, so it's time to acknowledge that. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and walk on over to that subscribe button and touch it. It's free. It won't cost you anything. But for now, that's all I have for you today. Bye. Subscribe.